Hi friends! Welcome back to the Project Return Online Classroom. I'm Miss Celia and today is July 28th and we're just going to go ahead and continue our discussion about the brain. I'd like to go over the different lobes of the brain again. I know we touched on them very briefly in a previous video, so I figured I'd take the opportunity to go into a little bit more detail about the frontal lobe and the occipital lobe. Starting with the frontal lobe, the frontal lobe is located right here behind our forehead and is divided into two sections. So this is going to be the front of the brain over here. It is this green shaded section all up here. And the frontal lobe is known as the control panel of our personality and our communication with others. It's responsible for intentional movements. So this doesn't include reflexes. For example, if somebody hits your knee and your knee kicks, that does not, that's a reflex. That's not a voluntary movement or an intentional movement. An intentional movement would be like me raising my hand or expressing my emotion, smiling, physical expressions of emotion, or frowning, skeletal or muscle movement. Again, raising my hand, clapping, something like that, that's voluntary. Like I said, the lobe is divided into two sections right down the middle. So you have a left side and a right side. And what's funny about the frontal lobe is that the left side of the frontal lobe actually controls the right side of your body. And the right side actually controls the left side of your body. So the wiring kind of got switched there at some point, but the opposite side of the frontal lobe controls the opposite side of the body. There's a few parts of the frontal lobe that we need to know about, the first of which is called the prefrontal cortex. This is known as the sensory cortex, and it's the largest section of this lobe of the brain. Uh, it's, a, it's what allows us to assess risk in our behavior, positive or negative risk, consequences of our actions, basically. For example, running into the street without looking, our frontal lobe is what tells us that that is a bad idea. We might get hit by a car. Or if we're planting a flower, our frontal lobe is what tells us this is a good idea. This is going to make people smile. Our frontal lobe is responsible for processing consequences of our actions, whether they are good or bad. The frontal lobe is the most common place that people receive brain injuries, and it can cause complete changes in people's personalities, limit their facial expressions, and may cause issues with someone's ability to assess risk or danger. Like I just mentioned, the prefrontal cortex is responsible for assessing and understanding the risks of our behavior. So if our prefrontal cortex gets damaged, then somebody may begin engaging in more risky behavior. There's also a very small part of the frontal lobe called the Broca's area. The Broca's area is crucial because it's what put our thoughts into words and, put, and helps us understand language. It's named after Pierre Paul Broca, who was a French physician in the 1800s. He studied patients with speech and language comprehension problems, and he was the first one to have definitive proof that a part of the brain is responsible for a certain task. He began noticing that his patients with speech or language comprehension issues kept having lesions or tumors or other kinds of injuries to one specific part of the brain. And that was the first proof that the brain, each part of the brain has a different function. So because of him, we call this area the Broca's area. A Broca's area is responsible for turning our thoughts into speech, so it's allowing me to speak to you right now. And then when I talk to you guys here at the center and you guys tell me about your weekend, my Broca's area is going into high gear because it allows me to understand what you're saying as well. Uh, damage to the Broca's area can have severe impact on communication amongst people. Uh, stuttering is caused by underactivity in the Broca's area. If you've ever met somebody with a stutter, it's because their Broca's area is not working as quickly and efficiently as maybe mine or yours would be. Aphasia is also caused by some kind of trauma to the Broca's area. It can be a stroke or a head injury. And aphasia is the inability to comprehend language or formulate sentences. So if individuals with aphasia, depending on the severity of their injury, may have issues with putting sentences together. They may be able to say words or simple phrases, but stringing or understanding a whole sentence may be very difficult for them. 
and you know that if this is the problem that you see someone's having, they likely had a great injury to their brocus area right here in their frontal lobe. Now, the reason that we know that the frontal lobe is responsible for our personality is because of a guy named Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage was born in 1823 and died in 1860. And he was an American railroad construction worker who was working on building the railroads in the heat and the prime time for the railroads when that began going on. He was in a terrible accident and an iron rod that he was working with punctured his brain and left serious brain damage to the left side of his frontal lobe. He was a medical marvel though because doctors honestly did not know how he survived, uh, but he ended up being something very important for us to understand the function of the brain and the frontal lobe. After his accident, his friends began to notice that he kind of started regressing. He began acting like a teenager, taking risky behavior and not caring about consequences. His personality became a little bit more rude. Uh, his personality and behavior were both changing due to this injury. And the frontal lobe was the only part of the brain that was really affected. So scientists and physicians were able to make that connection that the frontal lobe is the hub for our personality. And although Phineas Gage was in a terrible, terrible accident, it ended up being a good thing for us in the name of science to understand the function of that. Gage also was having trouble uh, managing his emotions and would lash out a lot. So that also helped us come to the conclusion that um, emotional regulation is found and is responsible in the frontal lobe. On to the occipital lobe. The occipital lobe is in the rear of the head right here. On my little diagram up here, it's gonna be this blue section right here. The occipital lobe does not have as many functions, but it is also crucial for our dominant sense. Our dominant sense as humans is our eyesight, and that's what we rely on to interpret and understand the world the most. So the occipital lobe is what's responsible for helping us understand and comprehend the world that we see around us. It's also divided into two lobes as well, a left and right lobe. The left eye is comprehended in the right side of the lobe, and the right eye is comprehended in the left side of the lobe. So again, the wiring got a little switch there. Uh, there are two major parts of the occipital lobe. The first part is called the dorsal stream, and the dorsal stream helps us understand where or how things are. For example, I can see that you, the camera, is five feet away from me. My dorsal stream is allowing me to understand perception and distance between myself and another object. It also is helping me to comprehend colors. For example, I can see that this is pink, and it is below my purple writing right here. So it's not letting me see where things are and how they exist, how do they appear. And then the second part is called the ventral stream. So we have the dorsal stream and now we have the ventral stream. The ventral stream is helps us process what we are seeing at what we are seeing, what is in our line of vision. As a child, we begin to familiarize ourselves with different objects. And the more we grow, the more objects we're able to remember and comprehend. So our ventral stream is what associates those memories of objects with what objects we are seeing. For example, I'm seeing a piece of paper right now. My ventral stream is allowing me to understand and re recognize that this is a piece of paper. My dorsal stream is allowing me to understand, okay, it is one arm's length, uh, arm's length away from me, and it is white. So that's a little bit more about the frontal and occipital lobes. I hope you guys are enjoying my little module on brain anatomy. I find anatomy very interesting, which is why I felt like I could share it with you guys. If you have another part of the body that you'd like to learn about, maybe a body system or a different organ, go ahead, leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining me on the Project Return Online Classroom, and we'll see you guys next time.